Howdy on Wallax Lives. I think it's time to play a little better than wolves. Alright. Uh I'm gonna room here. I'm pretty sure I've just got I've got no chicken, right? Isn't that what the deal is? Oh man, these guys have just chewed through the grass. And I've got no chicken here. Um, clearly I need a bigger pen for these guys. I was not expecting that. They just demolished the grass. That's crazy, guys. How did you eat so much grass? Whoa. Alright. Well, let's go take a look at that. Let's see what we can do on the outside here. Um, okay, so I already mean... I already meet the edge. Also, I didn't realize that I had sealed off my my path. Alright, I gotta put a path in, apparently. Listen, I'll probably make that look nicer. But that is squid land there and uh, you know I'd prefer not to be killed off by squid but nicer I meant like um, I could put like a fence I can still see over or something. Oh yeah, I forgot I got those diamonds last time. Nice. Okay. Listen, I'm just gonna walk this right over here. Uh Don't fall off. I'll be trapped in squid land. <laughs> All right, and then I should have some stairs. Oh, this is, um, interesting. I put down slabs okay I just don't trust those guys I don't trust them at all all right let's go uh well I probably can just empty some stuff here Got some creepiness going on over here. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, let's throw out some dirt. This, a little bit of that. Probably going to wind up going back down to do some more mining today. Uh, 
I planned on I plan on getting a little more done in between, but man, I tell you what. Uh, I got so distracted by Baldur's Gate this weekend. I uh I don't think I'm all the way through Act One, but uh pretty close. And I've run I don't know. Probably four different characters through chunks of Act One now. Trying to find the one I like. Um problem is, is the game it's not a problem, but uh, the game is not true D and D. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, okay, it's it's eight times six, so it's um forty-eight. Oh yeah, duh, because I got forty-eight. So half of this has to become seeds. Uh, and so there are some things in the game that I go into being a D and D game, and and then you read things like every option that's in the player's handbook will be available in the game, and that's a lie. Uh, it is not identical to the player's handbook. There's a lot of differences in how the game mechanics work compared to uh, compared to actual D and D. Um, some of them that are quite irritating, honestly. Um, but, uh, you know, I I dig a good uh, squad tactical game, um, turn-based game. It's kind of like XCOM, but, you know, fantasy. Um, there's definitely been some some disconnect between what I know of playing D&D for so many years now and uh, the actual mechanics of the game. Uh, one of the things I can't get over is uh, <laughs> is the fact that um, there are options that are available in Oh man, look at that. We're almost there. 24. Uh, the options that are available in regular D&D aren't all there in this game. Even though they stated that all the options would be available. Uh, and so, I, uh, I like certain aspects of the Warlock Great Old Ones class. Uh, great? Is it Great Old One? I think so. And, um... And so that's, that's the character I've played the most with. And some of it works really well. Uh, but... I noticed that not all the options that are available <laughs> to the Warlock class are available in the game. And so, like, there's a whole bunch of stuff you come across that's like, these plaques are written in an archaic language that none of you understand, or um, this is in a language you don't know. Uh, and so, one of the warlock skills that I really dig is, uh, uh, I think it's Eyes of the Runekeeper. Uh, is it Runekeeper? Eyes of the something but it lets you read all written things um and so uh it's a little disappointing that's not in the game or if it is i can't find it uh another thing that drives me crazy is uh, there's no xp bar i can't find that either uh and that that really drives me crazy because i never know how close to level i am um another thing uh pretty irritating to me uh, is, uh, the fact that, oh, dude, I'm out of torches. That's irritating to me, too. Haha. <laughs> uh, is the fact that, um, your guys don't level 
at the same time. Uh, which... Which kind of sucks, because, uh, you know, your guy dies, and he doesn't get XP, but in m pretty much every D&D &D game I've ever played in, uh, you just get handed XP at the end of the night. And so everybody levels at the same amount, because it's really hard to balance a game around characters at different levels. Uh, and so it's a little annoying that not all my characters are the same level. And since I can't see the XP bar, I don't know how far away they are from leveling. And I find that, uh, you know, annoying. Real annoying. Um, it's why I hate to play... Uh, I hear people love it, but I despise playing in... Oh, what's it called? It's one of the ways I suggest you do XP in D&D &D games. Uh, um, I like to... Uh, I like to lay out the XP for my players at the end when I'm running a game. I'm looking for sticks. And I don't even have... Don't even have a full stack of sticks. Alright, let's go make some sticks, I guess. Um, so, uh... Oh man, I was kind of hoping I had a whole stack of stuff here. Alright, so that would become... Okay, if we're gonna do that, then really I just need 32 of these. I'll make a stack of sticks. Um... Man, what is that called? Anyways, uh, what I like to do is, uh, you know, you lay out what's going to happen for the night. Uh, or what you think will happen for the night. And so you put, like, different groups of monsters in different places. Um, usually I figure that all out ahead of time. It, it really slows down the game if you, you wait till the... Till the game is going on to do that kind of stuff. So, you, you know, you plan out a little bit ahead of time. Um, it doesn't have to be... Ex extensive necessarily uh no you know what I have a full stack there we go uh but uh you know you get your your group of monsters and then they uh they have xp you know how many people are going to be there you know so you divide the total amount of xp by the number of players there are that kind of stuff and uh but then you can write down uh after each group of monsters how much xp they were worth uh and so when when you're doing the game and you get to the end of the night, then it's pretty easy just to tabulate what everybody, you know, how much they got through. And, um, and so that's usually how I do it. Um, I guess some people like hand out the XP as the game is happening. So I guess that's, that's possible. Um, I probably wouldn't do it that way because, uh, you know, you don't necessarily, it, leveling up takes time. <laughs> uh, and so you don't necessarily want your players suddenly leveling up in the middle of... Uh, I can't remember if I finished this or if I'm going through... I must have finished this because that's uh, some lava right there. See, speaking of lava... Okay, okay, crap. You know what? You know what? Screw that up. I've got no blocks on my hotbar. Yep. Uh, 
All right. Uh, one. Shoot, I still don't think that's over far enough. It's okay, I can get up here. Um, I can't believe I can't remember what that other form of leveling is called. <laughs> I'm just drawing a blank. Uh, it's where... Um, milestone, that's what it's called. It's where you reach a big moment or... Your your story is laid out more like a uh your your game I mean is laid out more like a story with chapters, and so you don't go up a level until you reach specific points. Um, and I hate that. I hate that. I it it distracts from my enjoyment of the game to not feel like I'm earning my way. Uh. Why I don't know, but that's just that's how I play. Uh, but it's it's really really annoying to me to play a game that is um this milestone leveling like that. Because uh, I guess I guess the thing is is that to me to me D and D is a game of uh, the DM. Uh, the person in charge of what's going on is the world builder. Uh, but my character is supposed to exist in this world and interact with this world. And so I feel like when you play the game, it's, it's called player agency. Um, I like extreme player agency. Um, now that's not to say that you don't, you know, as a DM, push your players in the direction you want them to go um you know because you are the one that's like they go into a bar have you heard any rumors you know are there any rumors about strange happenings and then you're like oh yeah see here's the thing um and then you give them the rumor that sends them to the place they want or uh, you know sometimes I'll, I'll read about um I'll read about people being like, I made this dungeon and then my players didn't even go to it. And I'm just like, okay, well, it's not, it's not really how it works. You just move your dungeon to where the players are at. Um, like you might give them the name of something, but if you have a dungeon laid out, just make them come across it someplace else and just use your dungeon. Uh, it's fine. Uh, and so the the player's job is to react to the world that they that you have, but the player needs to be able to react to your world. And so uh, if your game is poorly milestoned, then that means you, for me, in the games I've played that are milestone leveling. For me, what it means is I have to do the thing the DM wants or else we're not going to get our level. And I've played that game. And so you you can't you can't wander around as much as you would like to because you have to do the specific thing. Uh, now, I'm fine with you have to do the specific thing before you can move on to the next section. But I'd like to be able to, you know earn my stuff in this section I'm in um, and not be like oh well see I designed this whole section to be a specific level and I refuse to uh, I refuse to um, tailor your encounters to your characters instead I want you to tailor your characters to my encounters <laughs> Um, and so, you know, my, the DM that I usually, uh, play with, uh, sometimes the game feels a little like a war against the DM and not a D and D game. And I know everybody's like, just get a different DM. Uh, but you know, I, I've tried and, uh, uh, I'm not really a go out and find people kind of person. And, uh. 
And so this guy is the only DM I currently have available. And it is sometimes very antagonistic playing with him. We do feel, our group does feel like he wants to win. <laughs> Which isn't uh, necessarily how the game is supposed to be played. Um, but you know, when it's fun, it's fun. Uh, even if there's about three or four times a night where you're just like, ugh. But, uh, yeah, so it, it's not like that in Baldur's Gate. Um, you know, you're definitely going up. I think you're going up your levels. You do get XP when you kill things. The problem is, is the amount of XP you get is tiny most of the time. And I can't tell. I can't tell when I'm going to level up or how close I am or any of that. And so I hate that it's hidden. I, I hate not knowing. I hate not knowing, should I push on for the next thing? Or do I think that I'm close enough that I should go do this side thing and get the XP from that now rather than come back to it at a later time? I, it helps me plan. And, uh, and so the lack of... I, I really, if it's in the game, I have not been able to find it. There's only so many screens and none of them appear to have an XP bar on them to me. Um, I think there's a faction thing on the screen, but I haven't really seen how that plays out either. So, I don't know. Uh, I think that's the only bar. Unless there's like a button I'm missing. There could be a button I'm missing, I, I guess. But, uh, yeah, and then um, uh, the other thing that I don't understand at all is my players have the same stats. Uh, I think I think the Warlock is just broken, maybe. Uh, I think maybe I should play the game again um, now that I've got a good feel for how the game is played. The problem is, is the Warlock has such useful abilities that, that, do, that do get used a lot in the game. Uh, because he's, uh, uh, I love Great Old One, they've got Detect Thoughts, they've got um, protection for their mind, and stuff like that. Uh, they're very, um, have really high persuasion, uh, and stuff like that. And so it plays pretty well into the game. Uh, and they, they do make really good use of your abilities like that. I, I was very pleased at how how good the game makes use of of those kinds of things detect thoughts and persuasion and intimidation and all that and uh, how you are able to get through things although it does kind of break the game uh, a little bit like it's too it's too weird uh in spots um but uh i noticed that in combat uh the percentage chance for things to hit are really really bad for my warlock and i don't understand why uh and what i mean by that is <laughs> when you're playing the game for real um you roll a d20 uh you know 20 side die and then your player uh if they have um crap what's it called P -p 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 proficiency that's it i wanted to say persuasion again but i knew that wasn't it uh, if they have proficiency in whatever they're using to attack with, then they get to add their proficiency bonus. Which is a little bonus that lets your guys become more and more powerful as they level up. Because your main stats don't change that much. And so, uh, at the beginning of the game, you might have uh, plus three strength, right? And, uh, well, by the end of the game, you might still have plus three strength. Uh, and so, if you use a, an item... And turn off that email. Uh, you might have an item uh, or like a sword uh, that uses strength. And so if you have a plus three strength at the beginning and you never raise your strength through any means, then you're always going to have a plus three strength. So even at the end of the game, you would still have the same swinging amount. But if you're proficient in the item, then as the game progresses, you become better and better at using that item. Um, and so you get basically a level bonus. Um, ooh, nice, more diamonds! Why were there no diamonds for so many rows? And this is like 
two rows in a row with diamonds. Yes. Yes, let's let's see how many stacks of rock I pick up cuz clearly that's the more important item. This game, I tell you. Like no, no, really, you want the rocks, not the diamonds. And what's that? You moved the rocks? Well, here's another stack of rocks. All right, let's uh make sure I don't miss any here. So, um so just a, a quick example, uh, like my my rogue in the party, right? He has a plus plus four dexterity, okay? And then the weapon I use uses dexterity to attack. And uh, so I think at, at the beginning, uh, well, I know at the beginning you get a plus two proficiency in things you're proficient at. So when you roll your d20, well, then you add in your dexterity for using a dexterity weapon. So that's a plus three four and then you, you add your proficiency bonus that's another plus two so even though you're rolling the d20 um it's not just the d20 you also get to add in your um your dex and your proficiency and so it becomes a plus six to whatever you rolled okay so if you're attacking uh say i don't know a hobgoblin with chainmail or something i don't know <laughs> then his ac might be like 17 so that means that when you roll your d20 you want to get you want to get at least an 11 because if you get an 11 and then you add your 6 to it that becomes 17 that beats his armor class well it meets his armor class which means you, you went through it and so he takes damage from your weapon right that's that's pretty basic um so the problem is, is that my my warlock also has an 18, but it's in charisma, uh, which is the basis for my abilities. So I'm very confused as to why my rogue is running like 80% to 90% chance to hit things. And my Warlock, who has the same stats, um, is running so much lower. Like, 55%. Uh, they both have the same pluses. <laughs> uh, I think the Rogue actually has a plus one weapon. No, because my weapon's also plus one on my Warlock. My Warlock is also supposed to be using Charisma as his attack. And I feel like the game is not calculating that correctly, but it also applies to his spells, and his spells should be the same thing. His to hit chance should be basically almost the same as my my rogue, but but they are not. Well, they don't tell you. Uh, they don't tell you what your rolls are or anything. They just show you the percent hands, percent, woof, percent to hit chance um, before you tell them to attack, and then whether you hit, you hit or not. And so there's definitely something wonky going on with the the math, and um, it really sucks because my I've reached level five now, and uh, at level five um, the warlock spell now hits two things. But now it's like two things with like 55 or 45 percent chance to hit. Meanwhile, my rogue walking around with two plus one swords, um, you know, he's hitting, he's hitting like 88 percent chance to hit, uh, kind of thing. And I'm just like, what is going on with this game? That my rogue is like always hitting, and my warlock is never hitting, even though they have the same strats. I know how the game works is the big trick and something is wrong with the math. Uh, in fact, the rogue is so far above everybody else with his to hit chance. I don't understand what's going down with that game. Uh, and then there's, there's been some story issues I haven't liked. Um, I guess, I guess real quick here at the end, 
big spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, the story of the game is that you uh, got infected uh, by a mind flare. They put some parasites in your brain. And uh, so far, uh, no one can help you. But <laughs> the game keeps indicating that certain people can help you, and every single one of those people except one so far, their method of helping me is to try and kill me. Uh, hey, we want you to do this thing for us, and if you do this thing for us, we can definitely help you. Uh, and then, no, they just try to kill you. Uh, and then this weird thing happened. So, often I like to play, not in regular D&D &D game, but in video games, I often like to play uh, Dark Elf. Uh, why, I don't know. It's just always been a thing since Daggerfall. Uh, and so I'm like, ooh, I'm going to play a Dark Elf uh, I'm like, we'll see how this game takes into account being a dark elf. Uh, cause they're mostly shunned. Uh, they're evil, evil. Uh, their societies are very evil, like slaving societies and stuff like that. Um, and so there was a chance when I talked to a goblin at one point to persuade them to let me buy. And when I did the persuasion, I don't know why this was a decision in the in the making of the game, but once I persuaded that first goblin uh, that I was that I was on the bad guy's side, even though I'm not, that trips something in the game, and now every goblin I come across is friendly. Uh, And so I'm like, yeah, there's just, there's no way I'm going through this game being friendly to the bad guys because all you're doing is taking out an entire, an entire section of act one that would give me XP to help me level up. <laughs> uh, also, apparently the game only goes to level 12, uh, which I'm disappointed by. Um... I'm probably going to hit level 12 well before the end of the game. But, uh, yeah, uh, so between that, between Baldur's Gate, all the time I spent on Baldur's Gate this weekend, and, um, the power, again, not staying on. Uh, power went out again yesterday. <laughs> Hopefully that was the last time, though. Uh, they came out and they... Um, they replaced, they replaced the meter on the side of the house because they had come through and removed an antenna, he, the guy told me, uh, off of, uh, the power pole, I guess. And so he needed to put in the new thing, but of course that's, you know, power out again until he was done. Uh, so yeah, it'd be nice to uh, keep the power on so that I can do things like work or, uh, you know, record. <laughs> All right, with that, be ready the small things, lean to the light. I will talk to you later.